Hello YouTube, this is Goddard Radio Moscow here again with another beer review. Uh, now I have another quite interesting one for you today, I'm going for another Scottish craft beer. All my Scottish beer seems to have ended up at my parents house for some reason, I'm not quite sure why. Uh, but today I have for you another one that's quite local to me when I'm studying in Aberdeen. This is the Speyside Craft Brewery Randolph's Leap Lager. And this one's quite interesting for me because the, uh, the brewer, the guy who owns this brewery, Seb Jones, is an alumni of the University of Aberdeen Chemistry Department where I'm studying for my master's degree just now. Uh, so this one should be quite interesting. I'm sure I've actually seen this guy's name on some of the boards. Uh, in our university you get awards for uh, for achieving in this, the four different disciplines of chemistry and I'm sure I've seen this guy's name on one of the boards that are up in the department on one of the awards. He's obviously won one of these in the last few years. But anyway, as is usual with my beer reviews, I'll just take you through a little bit of a history of the brewery itself. I've been and researched that for you but if you are simply just interested in the tasting of this beer then feel free just to fast forward towards the last few minutes of this video and you will catch that. Now for those of you watching outside of Scotland, just so you can get a bit of an idea where exactly we're talking about that this brewery's from, uh, this is from a little town called Forest which is just by Elgin and uh, I always describe Scotland as looking like a bit of a monster's head so in the east by the monster's nose you have the city of Aberdeen, oil capital of Europe and then as you go over to the west the monster starts to get a bit of a mohawk thing and you get this sort of corner to it and Inverness is just in the sort of water inlet here and then you go down to Loch Ness but Elgin is right in the middle on the north coast uh, between these two cities you get a really beautiful train journey between these two cities so definitely worth doing it if you're visiting Scotland from outside of the country but um, Forest is just I believe is the next stop along on the train from uh, from Elgin but this region is called Speyside and this is very very famous for its whiskey distilleries some of the ones that you would find here they're called uh, this is a list of them that I've researched for you there's Aberlour, Balveni, Ben Reich, Ben Romach, Cardu, Craganmore, Dallas Dew, Glen Grant, Glen Moray, Glen Farclass, Glen Fiddich, Glen Livet, Macallan, Speyside Cooperage and Strathila. So there's a lot of famous uh, Scottish whisky distilleries there and the main reason for this is the fact that the water source up there is very very pure and it's very well known that you get a lot of the good whiskies up there. Some of the famous ones looking through that list, I've heard of Ben Riach and Balvenie, they're quite famous, Craganmore, uh, Glen Moray is another famous one and Glen Fiddich, Macallan is a very very, they're a, I believe they're more, they're quite a premium whisky brand but definitely look into these, maybe I should start doing some whisky reviews for you at some stage but that's a very expensive hobby. But um, this brewery is another very very new uh, craft brewery that's popped up with the recent sort of boom in Scottish craft brewing. Other uh, local craft breweries in the local area are the Windswept Brewery from Lossiemouth, I've done one of their uh, beer reviews already, there's the Cairngorm Brewery from Aviemore and there's also Brewmeister in Keith who I believe at the moment actually hold the record for the world's strongest beer. Um, but obviously there are others nearer Aberdeen and Inverness as well and uh, you've seen me do a few brew dog reviews and there are a couple more breweries by Inverness as well that I'll review in the future. But anyway, going on to this brewery itself, this brewery was founded by Seb Jones who as I mentioned is a former chemistry student of Aberdeen University, one of the four ancient universities of Scotland uh, but he apparently had been brewing on and off with his dad since the age of 13 and they used to experiment with a lot of these different home brewing kits that you can pick up but the experimentation tailed off when Seb entered his senior years at high school and he started playing music and stuff like that but this uh, interest was rekindled after he had studied uh, chemistry at Aberdeen University but Seb opted after, his, after he graduated to choose Moray as the location for his brewery and he received funding from the Moray Business Gateway which is a public, uh, publicly funded organisation that helps businesses get off the ground and he also received support from the Prince's Scottish Youth Trust who gave him a loan to pay for the training in the brewing process which he did in Sunderland in England at Brew Lab. But Seb seems to have gone through kind of various hurdles from reading through his statement here on the website, getting different organisations uh, to get the brewery off the ground and help him out with that. But he says that it was very difficult to coordinate the funding, the premises and the equipment all at the same time. And it took him quite a while to choose the actual premises for the brewery that, and that he has just now and that he needed investors to help him with this. But he said that the investors were uh, very, very open to this idea and very enthusiastic about this. And he spoke to several people apart Apparently, and uh, he, always, he received several investment offers and this helped him to get the brewery um, off the ground. But in the letter that he has on the website there, I'll put the website link in the description for you. He's written sort of a, a kind of open letter to the, the fans of the brewery if you like. But he says that his brewing journey began about 30 months ago and that the brewery was launched about 12 months ago. But I looked at the brewery website also has a blog where you can keep up to date with the... Uh, 
with the current goings on at the brewery but I'm guessing the last entry on this brewery was actually February 2013 so it's been a few months but he says that the brewery was launched about 12 months ago so I'm guessing that they're maybe about two maybe moving into their third year of operations just now but yet again one of the other as I say it's one of the breweries that have popped up during the sort of Scottish craft brewing boom but the brewery's other beers in addition to the Randolph Sleep Lager include the Bottle Nose Bitter which is a bitter ale obviously named after the dolphins that you can often see on the Moray Coast. There's the Moray IPA and the Bow Fiddle Blonde and the name for this one is a reference to the Bow Fiddle Rock which is a gull colony in the local area and apparently one of the rites of passage as a young, uh, as a young kid is to go up there and look for seagulls eggs and stuff like that. Seagulls in Scotland are a real pain in the arse if you like. They're not scared of humans anymore. They swoop down and try and attack you and stuff like that. And in my opinion they should be shot but you know RSPB won't like me saying that. But anyway just to let you have a little look at the bottle and cap of this one as I like to do I'll just bring up the camera again to make sure you're seeing that. It's quite a nice uh, design on this one actually. It's quite like it's a uh, paper that's been scrunched up and it's been kind of handwritten on but as you can see there's quite a nice design to this one you can see the space side craft brewery symbol there it has a little bit of a a uh, description on the back and it says here uh, Randolph Sleep is a refreshing lager style ale light golden with a delicious clean flavour that is best served chilled uh, and this beer apparently takes its name from a local Maori beauty spot where in the 14th century during local clan warfare marauders let the liver Findhorn while fleeing from the Earl of Maori Thomas Randolph there's a bit more of a history to that one but the brewery's a uh, sort of trademark if you like as you can see at the bottom here it says against the grain and there's a bit of an explanation of that on the bottle and it says here eh, against the grain will mean something different for everyone for me it symbolizes everything that space Side craft brewery stands for after studying chemistry at university my expected path was into industry instead I followed my passion I came home to space Side in Murray malt whiskey country and set to create the finest craft beers I could so I sincerely hope you enjoy my beer and then he's got his little Seb Jones has his signature on the beer there that's a nice touch actually I quite like that the bottle cap on this one each of these different beers I've seen one or two of them before but they all have their different uh, colored bottle caps on there hopefully they introduce the uh, space side lager on there I quite like the specialized bottle caps but I think that's expensive for breweries to do but um, this is a nice looking uh, presentation of the beer I have to say I have to uh, com uh, compliment the brewery for that but there is a bit of a story behind uh, this beer as well this one is a 4.6% uh, golden ale lager style ale as it's described but the, this is named after the iconic god uh, on the River Findhorn in the Moray countryside. And uh, there's the river, in this particular gorge, the river crosses along the rocks at the bottom of the gorge. But legend has it that Thomas Randolph, who was the first Earl of Moray, and that you're talking uh, the, around 1330s, just after Robert the Bruce, uh, and this he was actually Thomas Moray, uh, sorry, Thomas uh, Randolph was the nephew of King Robert the Bruce. He was trying to catch a certain Alistair Cumming, who was head of a local clan, and he leapt across the gorge, this gorge, to freedom while Randolph's men in pursuit. At this time in Scottish history, um, there was a lot of debates about who should be the king. There wasn't this um, sort of autocratic uh, monarchy that you had in Scotland, but in my opinion, when I read through the history, Robert the Bruce was definitely the one who should have been the king. There was two families basically uh, fighting over who should be the king of Scotland, but we chose the right one in the end because we were under uh, invasion and stuff like that at the time. But that's a different story. Let's get on to the tasting of this beer itself. So as I mentioned, this is a 4.6% golden ale. So let's get this guy out and get on with the tasting here. Just pop it open. Okay, let's get this guy out. Nice smell coming off this one initially, just as I pour it. It's quite cool to be pouring a beer that one of my kind of alumni of the program that I'm in has been brewing up. This is quite cool. It's a beautiful, nice sort of hazy golden colour, as you can see here. Just make sure I'm not going to overflow. Yep, there we go. Okay, so as you can see, it's a kind of it's actually quite clear. There's a little bit of haziness to it. There's maybe a half finger ahead on there, quite foamy. Some bigger bubbles in there. That's going to dissipate away, I can see quite quickly. But yeah, it's a nice clear beer. There are some visible bubbles, but not so much in the way of carbonation, I would say. Really attractive looking beer, a nice bright golden colour. In terms of the aroma, it's quite nice on the nose actually. It does have quite a mild nose, but it is quite interesting. You're picking up the uh, the light malts in here quite a bit, and there are elements of citrusy orange. 
and there is some kind of, you're getting the wheatiness and grassiness in there. The wheatiness and grassiness are quite well mixed together, but the things that stand out, as I say, the light malts, the citrus elements, and then the wheat and the uh, the wheat and the grassiness are mixed quite well together. The head's starting to fade into just a very, very thin layer on this one, but let's give this guy a taste. This is nice, actually, yeah. It's kind of definitely... It describes itself as a lager, but this is one of the things where it says it's a golden ale. In my opinion, this is one that's quite similar, where it's a... It tastes like one of these ones that is a real ale take on a lager, and I quite like this particular style of beer. Another one, if you're into that kind of thing, another good one to look at is a Shehalian from the Harveston Brewery. But this is a nice beer. There's nice citrusy elements in this one that I think maybe just have a little hint of spice character to it. Maybe that's from the wheat. But the wheat actually balances out that citrus character quite well. And you are picking up the grassiness in it kind of throughout. There is, just as you're taking this in, as the flavour kind of develops, you're picking up that hint of vanilla in there as well. This is a really nice, this has got a really nice mix of flavours in it, this one. A lot of kind of beer geeks kind of dismiss the idea of lagers, but it's one thing that the Scottish craft breweries seem to do quite well, is do these real ale, ta real ale takes on lager, and they do it really well. As I say, Harvest and Shehalgan is another one, and this is definitely another good one up there as well. But yeah, the main flavours in this one, you're getting the citrusy elements that do have that little bit of spice character. The wheat balances with that really well, and you can taste the vanilla in it as the flavour kind of develops. Uh, you are getting the grassy notes uh, throughout as well, but it's a bit bitter on the finish, and the spice kind of comes out on the finish as well, and that vanilla and wheatiness is kind of there too. It's got a really, really nice aftertaste to it, this one. It kind of lingers in the mouth quite well. The carbonation is uh, fairly mild, I would say. You can, you can taste it a little bit, but it's not too active. Mild to moderate carbonation. It's quite light bodied, it's quite nice, it's quite a sessionable beer this one. But yeah, it's quite dry on the finish with a nice bitterness. This is a really, really nice um, craft ale take on a lager style of beer. Many beer geeks kind of, as I say, many beer geeks kind of dismiss lagers as not having much flavour, but you know, some of them really do. This one does, Harvest and Shehalian does, so it's a beer, st this is a beer style I personally quite like. Beer is subjective, you know, you like different things from me and stuff like that. Um, but I hope this beer review has been informative for you. Like I say, if you're into the sort of uh, craft ale takes on different lager beers, this is definitely one to check out. And I have to say, after tasting this beer, I will definitely be doing more reviews from the, uh, the, the Speyside Craft Brewery. I'm really impressed with this one so far, and it's quite cool to see one of the alumni from me. Uh, from my department at university doing very very well I'm quite pleased with that and I definitely will be reviewing more of their beer but I hope this uh, this particular beer review has been quite informative for you and I've not been rambling away thanks again for watching and if you haven't already please consider subscribing there will be a lot more uh, Scottish craft beer reviews I've got a number of different breweries that I will be going through in the near future uh, but please let me know if you've tried this beer yourself please let me know your own thoughts on it and uh, thanks, for wa thanks for watching again like share subscribe let me know in the comments section your own thoughts on this beer thanks again for watching you've been watching Goddard Radio Moscow beer reviews and I'll catch you soon cheers